So taking the, the seal out, take your wheels, 33. Thirty-three metric. There's something wrong. This hub is brand new. I won't say brand new. Maybe like a year or two. But I use a, a different brand of seal, which is Stemco. I'm noticing it was spinning. So what I did was I changed with the best one, which is National Seal. But this hub seal been going out way too often. So I uh, I think I'm gonna change the hub once I get home. The hub and so. Take the drums off. I like the air one. Gives a lot less work and wood. I like to take them out before they actually go out to avoid washing the brakes and shit like that. This is already, uh, you see how it looks? You can take a look from the inside and that's how you do your inspection. This is the best bet to change them. It's quicker. So there's a half inch. I'm gonna start taking them out and Half inch. I like carrying a magnet plate because you really don't want to lose this. Just like that. The two does the job. I used to do this by hand. Let me tell you, this is a good deal. A bucket to get the oil. I'm just gonna keep this thing clean. And this oil is new, so I'm definitely gonna recycle show you later oh shit all right there it goes off trash craft the size of this is the same but the bolt might be different if i highly recommend to use this system because universal you can find it anywhere there's the part number and um yeah you just hit it with the flathead to get the locks off you just hammer it. Now it's unlocked. I like to use one at a time. Uh, for the small crush, the size is for this particular trailer is a three and one quarter, and then the big one in the back is a three and three quarters with eight points. They're both. They all are eight points. Eight points. Forgot to mention, you get this in Duramax. I mean AutoZone. It's a three quarter if it's perfect so you don't have to buy those expensive ones because this bolt doesn't require too much force let's take the first one off tap it at one time you unscrew it do it by hand i like to wrap it up on paper after just in case there's dust paper is better than tapo seal is better than um this one's always loose because this you adjust it. I like to use paper towel rags because especially we see it gets messy with a lot of oil. And then the regular ones, you're just going to have a lot of dirty rag. Take this shit off. Wrap it, make sure there's no dirt. That's how I like to leave it. Put it in the side. Once you get more towels, this is when it doesn't want to come out, you use your flathead. Use your flathead, chop it out. Then you grab it, you see the oil. The oil is new. We put it here, make sure it's nice and wrapped. So don't be in the dirt because sometimes it might get windy and you really don't want to be cleaning this out with brake cleaner because it's a waste of time for no reason. So wrap it, put it in the side. And here's the trick. You move it up and down. Make sure it gets loose. Damn it. That's it. That's what you want. So it drains all the oil off. Just let it sit for a little bit. Leaving it like this in this bucket so it drains. Meanwhile, I clean the, the other part, you know, so I don't have to be just sitting there waiting. So I'm 
just gonna clean this up with brake cleaner and grind it down. The best one, the red one, spray it and clean it up with the with this. And that's about it. Last, grind it down. That's the whole reason I like changing it before it goes bad. Because you see, this job doesn't get complicated. Instead of like doing all this, this old shit. So grind it out to clean it out. And this part is gonna be already done. So there was a guy that did a rebuild a while ago. All he did was talk about it. So you know if you're a vehicle learner, here's what I mean. Get a nice and shiny all around. After that, you clean it up with brake cleaner and leave it nice and clean, and that's it. This part is over. The drum is one of your main tools you see now, and this is the hammer you need. This is more for educational purpose. This one, I'll show you how to about the bearings, but you need the big one. There's a small one, there's a bigger one. So, yeah, you need paper there because the bearing is gonna fall with the seal. You don't want it to get dirty. So, this is what you do you turn it around this way. And I don't have a 4x4 left it at home, so I'm gonna take the rest with this one. And you hit it, you hit the bearing, and it should push the seal down. You hammer it with a big hammer. I tapped this off, I didn't feel comfortable. So I'm gonna use this big ass wood that I have. This is for roofing loads and shit. So, so you can get the idea. I got my little ladder because it's just tall. You uh, you see that? That's what you do. Cause you need you need an extended amount of force to beat this shit down, and then you hit it with the hammer. Yo, this shit tall as fuck. Then I'ma get on top of the trailer and shit. Something like that. Just gonna gun the top and just hammer it down. It should come out. Give it a little whack, and it should popped out. You see that? The bearings with the seal. It's already out. I'm uh. Put this where it belongs so I don't forget. So I keep going doing what I gotta do. What it looks like, what I like to do is wrap the, the bearing with paper towel. Yeah. There's the seal. The seal fell, but something told me the hubs. It might perhaps because it always goes here from that part. A little spring thing. And what happens when I align? But I think it's the two does his job. I, I, I put my money in the hub. It's getting it loose because I already got a seal that they didn't want to tighten up. So whatever, put this seal in the side. And there's the seal number. What I like to do, there's the part just in case you need the tool. Uh, what I like to do, I order them in O'Reilly and then during route. I get an O'Reilly and a route and I pick the new one out. It's always cheaper than TA. They're going to sell you a lower brand. In, in uh, I'm sorry, it's always cheaper than TA. In TA, they'll sell you a different brand for 100 bucks. This one, you get it for 50 and you can pick them up in the store. So, you know, just do your route. Obvious one, but I'm doing it, you know, visual learners. You spray it down. And then uh, you use your paper towel and dry everything. Make sure it's nice and dry. So once you finish the other side, you spray it with brake cleaner. This side, you clean it up. I like to take this seal out for last, so there won't be as much oil. And then after that, just prep this this top with a grinder. Scrape it down. Once it's prepped, get a clean one, dry. Make sure you hit like the last spot and there's no contaminants in there. Everything in the inside. Since I'm already doing this, I'm gonna talk about the bearings. So you get the big one, like this one. You're definitely gonna need the big hammer. I don't know, I have it up there. So you use this and you hit it right there. You see that spot? When you change the bearings. And then this thing should pop out. And then you flip it again, which I'm gonna show you after right now that I'm gonna flip it. And you do the same thing. So you see that? I already flipped it. You hit it with this, but the big one, this little one, you can hit it as hard as you can. It's not going to do anything. You need the thick one. You see it at Home Depot. It's bigger than this one. And then you hit it. You hit it. The thing about beating it, it will scrape. You see a little scrape here? You're going to need like a, a drill with those square uh, uh, grinder ones and smooth it out to make sure it's nice and clean before installing the other one. Once this is installed, the rest is very straightforward. 
Everything looks clean. You clean the bearing, make sure there's no contaminants. Usually it's a little bit of wood. I took it out with a small flathead uh, because when you're trying to hit it. So, so I usually grab it like this. Remember the, the, the fattest part or the biggest part always goes facing out the hub, regardless, front or, or bottom. So I usually do like this to so make sure there's no contaminant where the seal's gonna sit. And that's it. So there's the tool. I got it on Amazon. You can get it on your local truck stop. Um, it's by size. It's usually this to this one. Should have a number 20, 25, but one, three, four. I think there's five. But it's usually this one or that one. I gotta see. You just put the seal, you set it there, and that's how you'll be able to tell. I'll, tell, I'll show you right now. So here's the seal. I like to test them out by grabbing it from the middle and to, and spinning it. Can't do it because I have one hand. So this is what you do. You put it in there, whichever fits the right one. You see this one fits right. So that's the one for this seal. Okay, put it in the side. I like using this silicone on the corners. It has to be crumb in the bottom. The reason, there's two red ones. When you take it out, this one it goes off easy, but it seals. So you put both metal, you put them together, you can tell they link in. Like that. Now you get this one off. You put it like this. All right. You get the washer and the nut. Washer and the nut. And you tighten. But you get the idea. It was already ready. I'm just gonna prep this silicone. I'm gonna put silicone only in the corners. I usually grab it like this and then use one finger and go it, but I'll show you after. This is what I mean. You get it like a light quote, you use your finger and you put a little bit and you just start swiping it little by little. I like using my fingers a lot easier to clean than the gloves when they're full of silicone. So you set this here easy and then you get the tool and you hammer it i can't show you now i'm gonna show you once i'm done but you have to hammer it until you hear metal to metal it's gonna sound different now you just hammer it down make sure you hold it steady so this is sitting flat here's the noise just gonna tap it here that is the metal one and that's how you put a seal it's done what i like to do is Start cleaning up to all the tools I don't need so I don't have everything just sitting everywhere. And yeah, and then last, before even putting that seal, you gotta prep this, which I'm gonna show you now. I like gasket, it avoids me to use the grinder. So all I gotta do is brake cleaner, clean it, and it's good to go. And then grind it a little bit, those little spots. But I'm gonna show you after I get it clean. Clean, now I'm gonna use the grinder. Clean all the surface. Just in case you don't have a grinder, the old school doing it is with utility knife and you scrape it down. There you go. Now the parts are prepped, ready to install. Uh, this oil is new, has less than <clears throat> 5,000 miles, but I like to recycle it so I don't have to. So I use this method. This so far is the best bottle because it has a nice base that make a hole and let it drain me while I finish up with the other one. I'll show you now. My headphones were off, but yeah, you get my point. You see it's holding in base meanwhile I get this prep. So second step, I like putting silicone in here in the inside so it stays nice and tight, but you need to have everything prepped before you put the silicone. You don't want the silicone to dry up on you. So you really gonna need this bearing to be ready in hand. Cause this one, what it does, it keeps it in place. So the weight doesn't so the weight, remember the hub is heavy, so the weight doesn't push forward and moves the seal off its place. The light coat, you see that? Just be careful not to put it in the middle. That's what this little seal spring is. So you see that? It's almost complete. Just gonna put the rest of it. I'm not sure, whatever. Yeah. Lead to something. That's the way it's here.
thing is heavy, I couldn't record. So what you do, you grab it with two hands. You try to be very careful, try to centerize. After that, with one hand, you hold it here. And with the other one, you grab the bearing and you put it in place. It's not completely all the way in because that's the job of the, of the nut, the big one, to push it all the way in there. But you need to put this quick so it doesn't lean forward and moves the seal from its place. Uh, completely forgot a detail. Uh, before be, uh, before putting the lifting the tire up, you had to un, un, un adjust the brakes. There's a 716 and then lock the whole trailer. But the one that you want to get it loose is this one so you can get the drums off. Forgot that detail. That's the first one. But you see what I mean. So now I'm just going to dry everything up and tie everything up. I have for any uh, oil, the bolts are a lot easier to work when things are less messy. Put it all the way in there. All the way in there. This is all the way in hand tight. You use the, this one, the big one. Forgot the size, but I showed you already in the beginning. So you tie it all the way until it doesn't go anymore. You see, the more tighter it goes, the more it goes in. This is already tight. Once it's tight, once it's tight, you loosen it up. You see, you just smack it one time. And this is the part you do it by hand. Let me take this off and I'll show you. So you want to make sure it is nice and free. Like you see, like right now. So I guess I did it good. Then you do your test. Make sure there's not too much bumping. You see, moves? That right there. I'm not sure because using the camera, but you can feel it. It moves. Not sure if you can be able to see the little things that you have to use body weight. You gotta make sure it doesn't pop too much. Because whenever you go on top of the sidewalk, the little pop will get the seal a little bit off its way and it goes out. That's the reason this one went out. I went to like a really tight spot to offload. Yeah. Now it doesn't toggle too much. You hear that? That's the test for the when it's ups and downs for the bearings. Well, you get the point. So you grab from side to side, you turn it. Once it's nice and tight, then it's good. You see it moves freely. And uh, after that, it's put in the other one, make sure it's nice and adjusted. And uh, up and down the bearing. The, if it sounds like that with the tire on, then that's different. Right now, that play is normal. What is this one? Make sure it lines up with the little nipple. You did, I had to move it a little bit, so it lines up, it's nice, will move, you see. Second one, the third one is this one, there's the lock washer. Make sure you put it in there. You see already bent in the other way. And then last, the crusher, this is the one they had to tighten with all your might. <laughs> all right, there's the crush nut it by hand remember the numbers that need to come out the crush part goes in the back and uh i forgot let me just put this one out then that's a three and one quarter so you take this hard as hard as you can possibly can okay my used two hands i can't record so make sure it's nice and tight Oh shit. Well, you get the point. Just did that so you can visually see it. After that, don't forget this is the most important part. Hammer one of them down to make sure this bolt, just there's any vibration, doesn't get loose. This is the lock, emergency lock. There you have it. You hammer it down, the hammer, and then that's it. It's done. Now we're just going to put that and we go to the next step. Your hands are clean, everything's clean. You, are, you really don't want to put any contamination on this gaskets, you know. So you put them, I have to use both hands to put it on top, but you get my point. 
put two bolts before tying it up. Make sure everything lines up because these gaskets are universal. You can tell it has many holes for different hubs fit. And um, put everything by hand. And then I'll show you how to tighten them. By hand, you can still do, but it takes forever. You can get this impact or you can get the half inch. I mean the quarter inch, which is, has more torque than this one. But you don't need all that. So what I do, I start from side to side. A little bit. See that? So it goes even. Then the bottom. Not no 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 not strong, just enough so it's tight. You finish up later. Okay. Now you go all the way around. Very you know, that's it's gonna do his job. You don't need to go crazy. That's it. You already seen it. The complete install bin, uninstall, and install the seal. I'm, I'm just gonna start wrapping things up because now it's just the oil and the drums and the wheels. Organize everything last because the jack goes all the way in there. So it's pointless to put all that right now. I like to clean up right after, right after I get everything done because the rest is obvious. I'm gonna put the oil and I'm gonna show you the next step. I just I always notice a lot faster when we start doing the little things that needs to get done. So you put the oil. You see, fresh oil until it gets full. Once it's full, you let it sit. A lot of people, what they do, they put it on and they, they spin it. But what I notice, it doesn't do nothing. You have to let it sit for a little bit. And then it's gonna drain in it, but let's do it the other way so you can see both ways of putting it. Damn, though, that cap got a little dirty, though. Shit, hold on. Oh, you spin it. Damn, I should have put my gloves on. Now your hands will be filthy. People don't like using gloves, I get it, but I don't know, it's you, though. So, whatever, you spin it, you spin it, you spin it, and let it sit. And then it's supposed to go, you see? But meanwhile, it's doing that, I'm gonna show you the difference. Those are out there, man. That one I had to get an emergency. This is the one that I like, the Hendrickson one. You see, it has the little cap. It's a lot easier to pour in the oil. Not sure about the oil spec, but Fountain recommend every year you change all the oils. You see this Auto Man, you see it's fat. And there's Hendrickson. It has a little cap in it. Uh, I'm gonna start by replace them all the crown on this one because it's a lot easier to change the oil if it's knitted for every year that's it that's the recommendation and uh to put oil on there you go doing the same thing the thing about it, if you're rushing you could do it but you have to stop every 10 to 5 miles you really don't want to get the seal to get hot because it doesn't have oil this thing do get hot there's a lot of friction on it so take your time after all this work just to fuck it up. Spin it. And let it sit. Same process. The oil in it, spin it. Let it sit. Remember, it might look good, but this thing takes close to like half a bottle. Huh, strange. This is like the third time. Spin it, let it sit. The thing about it, it gets to a point, doesn't matter how much you spin it, it the, all the oil has to go in the middle. So, you can't tell if it's if it's all right. You gotta let the truck run for a little bit. Okay. This goes first before the tires. Some people do forget. It has happened. It's normal when you're trying to do things too fast. Drums, tires. Work smarter, not harder. Roll this shit all the way there, and then you lift it once it's there. You get to the spot. You deceive. It shows like it's full, but once the truck start running. It's gonna need oil.
We have it. It's dirty because I was dropping off a load in the railroad field and the dirt is, is what it is. So this goes out. This is the first one. I got this crowbar in Walmart. I think like 20 bucks. It does a lot of work. When I was a young mechanic, I used to lift this thing all the way up. All you need is like two fingers. And all you, a little push with the crowbar and you're good to go. There you have it. That's the first one. We're going to go get the other one. You don't, lift the, you don't need to lift the tire way too high. You just need enough space to push it out. So I like to use anti-seize because salt and rust makes things harder. You start seeing people getting the, those nuts hot, pink, cherry red. I like put anti-seize. You see that? I already put all of them. I just didn't want to record everything by steps. So I'm going to tighten it. Now, this tool, I've noticed it lost, it's losing power since I got it. It's old. I haven't done maintenance because since it's an essential tool for me, especially like this type of work, what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy another one. By the end of the month, I think there's a special with extra batteries. And then I'm going to send this one to repair because I really would li I like to have one in hand. But it's been losing power. But so far, it does the job. You can tell. So anti-seize. And here we go. I'm gonna show you a little trick. I like to do the cross light tight. And then every time you do it, make sure you tight it from the side. Let's say, you know, first two, then you turn it, and then you do those, those other ones. The reason is when you're doing from the top and bottom, there's too much weight that the tire fights with itself. So when you're doing side by side, it goes in even. So last, I like to wipe all the anti seize off the bolts because what happens is when you start driving, start spreading in the rims, and this thing is thick. So even though you power wash it and you take it to the shop, it's still gonna be there. Because once you start running, this thing starts sprinkling all over that rim. This makes it dirty because it does pick up dirt. That's it. And then make sure you clean your hands because anything you touch with anti seize, bro, anything you touch, oh, it will get stained. So, you see, that, like I was telling you about the oil, look, it already went down. I'm gonna put more. I wanted to get out of doubt, so I, was, I just want to put the tires before I do the testing that everybody does with the bearings. And I think these bearings are shut, that's the whole reason the seals be going out. Yeah, you see that? They wobble. Which is strange because the American brand, that she lasts 400,000 miles. This only lasts 100,000? That's crazy. I'm going to buy another one and I'm going to send a complaint to these niggas, to these people. I'm going to start doing all the bearings check. This shit is serious. That's the whole reason my seal's been going out. Honestly, I was not expecting those seals, I mean, those bearings to be shut that fast. Which is great. I could do it. Just gonna plan shit out for next week. I'm gonna get a motor. I'm gonna see hopefully O'Reilly sells them. But look, those bearings they got a, a total of 185,000. That's very strange. The American brand bearings are expensive. So we'll see. I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit. Hopefully the oil goes down before I start putting everything back in their place. Well, that's it. I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm gonna get it out. I got this in Hopper Fright. This air is better. I usually do it by hand and it takes a lot more time than it should. Once I finish all this, I'm gonna release the brakes and I had to adjust the brakes, especially on this side. So I'm doing slow. Make sure you don't go crazy because there's weight on the trailer. I'm gonna make sure it gets. While it's doing that, my advice, get out of there. Because right now, all the weight, the, the tires is getting it. Just let it sit for a few minutes. Let that tire do their thing. You really don't want to put your face in there, just in case. So these brakes are 716 to adjust them. Make sure the truck is locked and the trailer is loose. You only adjust brakes while the brakes are released. Never, ever get in between here. Ever, ever in your life. Always in the middle. Never put your belly close to a, a 
a tire. In this case, this is different because I got space to move, but not in the truck. All right, I'm going to start moving all this stuff. And I'm going to adjust the brakes, and then after that, I'm going to clean up. Like I have it of mine, but you do you. I like to leave the jack already ready for next use. So I leave it locked. That's it, we're going to adjust the brakes. I got to turn the light on, so that's going to be the next video. All right, we're gonna adjust the brakes. You see that? You see it looks good. Tied it to the way to the right. The cut for this is one foot. From pin to the back of the drum. Once it's nice and tight, you get it loose. I like to have an angle. I go from the top to the side. That's one, middle, two, three quarters. You see that? It's nice. So that's how you, you adjust brakes. They're all good. So we out. <laughs> Another thing that I think why the seals are gone, if you notice this hub is smaller than this one. This one, the nose look like. So look, you see, look, I'm gonna show you the other side. The nose is coming out more, which I think what it does is, is imbalance of when I turn. Well, that's a theory, but one thing for sure, those more, those bearings had to be changed. I've been taking my sweet time because I'm recording. I'm doing this because a friend of mine, so. Today's Saturday, so you see it's, it's empty, it doesn't have oil. It's a matter of oil. If you notice, I think this is like the fourth time. Not too much. I believe this should be the last one. You really don't want to overflow this. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this on YouTube. So out the road, I'm gonna call it out the road, getting seals fixed on the side of the, uh, you know? So I'm gonna put everything where it belongs and I'm gonna put this in YouTube. That's about it. You have seen it, how to put, install a um, road service seal. Now, if you wanna take the chance when it's moist, you wanna take the chance and try to drive, it's gonna go out regardless. But if you wanna take the chance, you wanna take a chance, everything gonna go bad. Hopefully your, your wheel hub doesn't go out, but when you get stopped by DLT, they do an inspection. First, you're gonna get a, a safety rating code, it's gonna go down. Second, you are, they're gonna put you out of service. So I mean, sometimes they get really big and certified mechanics is the one that needs to fix it with their license. So they're gonna call it a premium service because they went to the scale and that seal is gonna cost you about $1,000. So think about it. Are you really rushing to spend $1,000 or you just rather lose have a day, get it fixed, and carry on. And if you want to look at this one, you got a thousand dollars to spend if you want. Also, shout out to Gear Ranch. This little toolbox been with me for a long time. I got both half inch, uh, National Seal, O'Reilly, and this Chinese toolbox, Harbor Freight. So I might end up putting like a small toolbox here for like the straps. Because as you can see, I have these things pretty packed. And I have two toolbox on each side. But yeah, you need to carry your tools. So I know tools, sometimes the toolbox water goes in it. So I don't want to risk it. I'd rather put the straps and like the, those gallons in there. I'm gonna get like a small toolbox, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna see if I can find something the same size. But yeah, uh, so put a like, subscribe in the YouTube video. And I guess I might end up doing a uh, a bearing video I gotta look out for the part number get an order and out the road repairs yes, sir.